Hey guys, I'm Randy Romero with the Carolina Justice Report here yet again for another episode. Today we're chatting about what you need to know, the top three things you need to know about golf carts. So I'm being joined by attorneys Justin Lovely and Sarah Austin, and we are chatting all about the things folks need to know with golf carts. So I didn't realize that this was even a thing, but obviously here in Myrtle Beach, there's a lot of people that own golf carts. So there's a whole set of different rules for that, huh? Yes, there's a huge golf cart population here, I guess that's what I'm gonna call it, because uh, everybody's got them. Tourists, yeah. tourists want them when they come on vacation. People who live here have them when they live in communities, you know, mm -hmm. so they can drive to the beach. Uh, so they're, they're everywhere. I feel like it's gotten really big within the past, I don't know, five, 10 years, where I feel like now everybody, because before it wasn't such, a, I mean, it was kind of just for golf courses and maybe like some campgrounds or something like that. And now it's like everybody in neighborhoods have them. Yeah, well, they're fun to drive, right? Yeah. So yeah. Everybody, everybody loves a golf right. cart, right? Yeah. So you get easier for being instead of having to drag everything to yeah. the beach in your car and get it all sandy and throw it on a golf cart and get down to the beach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's very convenient. And, and you're right, they've been growing big time in the beach. Yeah. So much so there's lawsuits now and they're, they're uh, adding even more uh, litigation as far as who gets a decal to rent these things out. You know, the moped golf cart rental business in Myrtle Beach is very competitive because the, the tourists want them and they yeah. basically have a little monopoly on them. And so there's like four or five companies that basically mm -hmm. have all of these. But the issue is more golf carts, more mopeds on the street where there's more traffic, more people can get hurt. Yeah. And it just, it slows down the whole uh, issue for uh, first responders to get through the roads in sure. Myrtle Beach. So they've really started to regulate those and uh, they give more and more each year, but now it's more controlled. That's a city ordinance that they've okay. kind of done with, within the city limits. Okay. So, you know, our first tip kind of pertains to folks that are renting these golf carts. So there are not that many licensed places to rent these from, right? Right. So you got to make sure that they have a city license, that they they have these, de there'll be a decal. They sell them by decal per moped and per golf cart. Okay. So if, 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 if you're renting from somebody random that you find on the internet, or maybe through an Airbnb, or maybe through even Turo, those online rideshare companies, and it's a golf cart, mm -hmm. that is probably an unlicensed golf cart. You need to make sure you're going to like Myrtle Beach Golf Carts, one of these main licensed people who have, who have these decals, and more importantly, have insurance in the event an accident happened while you're you know, on the golf cart with your family. Interesting. Have we seen any golf cart cases yet at our law firm? Oh yeah, we've had a couple. Yeah. Interesting. Man, I did not know it was like... And the issue is you're not restrained, thing. right? Yeah. So when you get hit, you come to a stop, even if it's low speed on a golf cart, you're getting thrown from yeah. that golf cart. Right. And these golf carts are just made out of cheap metal. Plastic, it's not like a yeah. car. In plastic, yeah. So, because uh, they're made for the golf course, right? right they're not right. made to be riding on the, on the roads. Right, right. All right, and then we have our second tip. So there's a whole kind of list of different regulations for golf carts as far as, you know, when you can drive and where you can drive, right? Yeah, so everybody needs to keep this in mind because I see this rule broken every day, but the officers are really starting to crack down on this stuff. So you can only, first of all, you have to have a driver's license. Okay. okay. So you can't just let your kid drive a golf cart. Okay. Cops are going to pull you over, getting a ticket. I feel like that's for kids too. Sometimes the tourists will come down and treat it like it's like a go-kart or something. Yeah. You know, it's fun to drive, just right. get on there, but you're, there's laws. Well, because right. the speed doesn't go very fast. So you right. feel like it's a safer thing for them to drive. But, but you don't realize that they they're not allowed to do that. Got to have right. a license. Yeah. Now, if you own if you own it privately, you have to have a uh, uh, golf cart decal from the DMV as well. Oh, so you can't oh, just wow. drive yours around. If you think you if you own a golf oh. cart that you can drive it around, well, if you don't have the DMV decal, well, you can get a ticket for that. Crazy. Um, and then what about where you can go? Yeah. So you can only have it within four miles of whatever the registered address is. So if you live in, in Myrtle Beach, you know, just say off 38th Avenue. I'm just throwing this out there. Sure four miles around that, anywhere past that, and you're gonna get a ticket for that. Because they don't want you driving it, they don't want it to be like a personal vehicle. It's supposed sure. to be like a real quick real quick ride to the beach right, or whatever it may right. be. Right, right, interesting. Can't be at night. Okay. You know, because I mean, don't... what is that considered though? Because all these golf carts, they have headlights on them. Right, but dusk, if it once it gets once the sun goes down, that's considered do not have the the golf cart out huh. past that time. Okay. And then um, also it has to be on secondary roads, so you can't get out there on 501 in the golf cart, <laughs> you know. 
Concept. That would be scary. Yeah. That would be scary anyway. Yeah. But I mean, still good to know because I'm sure people have done it. You know. Oh yeah. Right. That's their mode for transportation. Um, now, are these like newer regulations? Have they always been in place? Well, they've been they've been uh, amended over the okay. years, right? Because you know people they, people always start having golf carts and something's got to get regulated. Right, and more right, and more right. rules apply, and that's when you know these more cities even put even more regulation on these. Yeah, no, that makes sense because I had a golf cart growing up in my neighborhood, and gosh, I mean thinking now of all the rules, I'm like, Ooh. Yeah, I can't used I to come down when I was younger um, in the Shore Drive area and there was golf carts being rented on most every corner. Like right. Everyone had a golf cart on all those roads. And now none of those places are there. And probably because they've cracked down, yeah. you have to have the decal, you have to be licensed, which I think it's a good thing. It is a good thing. I mean, it's a safety measure, right? It's right. to try and help protect people. I mean, because I know, I mean, my family always would go to like Ocean Lakes or different campgrounds mm -hmm. too. And oh my gosh, it's just like a sea of golf carts. But I know even there, They've really cracked down on watching the ages of people and making sure that they're licensed to be driving. Mm -hmm. So interesting. Well, here, here's another tip that's just coming to mind right here. You <laughs> got to have an insurance policy, a separate insurance policy on that golf well, cart. Well, that is our third tip. So that okay, works well, there you out. Go. That works third out. Tip. Okay, so you have to have a separate insurance policy on here. Okay, sometimes we might be able to pull back to to a homeowner's policy, but generally, insurers now because of these regulations, they make you have a separate golf cart policy. Okay. And if you do not have that. You get hurt, or you hurt somebody else, you, you, you're on the hook. You're 100% right. liable. Insurance companies like go step in and take take care of you. So yeah, so those those that have insurance but not on their golf cart, you're wide open for for that to be a, a problem. Yeah, well, be, that's, that's the worst case. You don't want well, can they still go to their normal insurance providers to just add that on? Yeah, you just got to make a phone call. Say, okay. hey, I got a golf cart that you'll have your give them your little DMV number on your decal. You're going to get from the DMV, and okay. they'll add it. You know, 15 minutes. Now, when we're talking about kind of driving a car versus driving a golf cart and different rules that apply, how does that, you know, correlate with like a DUI or something like that? Yeah, Is it the you, same rules? Yeah, you can absolutely get a DUI okay. in uh, South Carolina on a golf cart. And a lot of people do <laughs> yeah. every summer. Well, yeah. I believe it because it's kind of like like boats. It's kind of the same thing. When yeah. you're in like a, a fun environment, you're kind of, you know, hanging out outside and people do it. Yeah, yep. for sure. and you'll get pulled over, you'll do the roadside tests, and you'll be going to Myrtle Beach jail for the night. It's not <laughs> pleasant. So, Is it the same, like, alcohol level, you yeah, know? Yeah, if yep. you're 0.08, okay. they're going to do the roadside tests, field sobriety testing, you know, and if they have to go the next step, they're going to take you in, they're going to make you blow, yeah. and just because you're on a golf cart, that's not an excuse. They're yeah. going to get a DUI. Mm -hmm. I am, like, slightly surprised, though, just because golf carts can only go, like, I don't know, what, 30 miles an hour or something like that? So I would... I mean, it's never a good idea to drink and do anything like that that causes, you know, safety hazards. But I'm just kind of surprised that maybe the alcohol level isn't a little bit higher or anything like that. Well, no, the so. alcohol level is going to be, I mean, that's state law. That's standard, 0.08. Gotcha. And really, if you blow a 0.05, it's in the officer's discretion to take you. Okay. So just because if you think I had one beer, you, you pull off, if you're over 0.05, mm. if an officer thinks you're materially and appreciably impaired, you can't operate that golf cart on the Myrtle Beach roads, yeah. you're going to jail. Okay. And then you got to defend a damn DUI. Right. You know, just because you were trying to take a shortcut and rent a golf cart to drive your mm -hmm. car. Just don't, don't drive your car, don't drink and drive, and don't drink and drive a golf cart. Sure. Don't drink and drive anything. Yeah. <laughs> don't drink and drive. Probably just don't safe. do it, you yep. know? Don't do it. Well, That's let me ask thing. you a couple of other questions as far as golf carts, because now I'm interested. So some golf carts, they have seatbelts put in and then most standard ones obviously don't have seat belts, but does that matter? Is there any kind of code against seat belts or having them or anything like that? Well, all golf carts are different, okay? And that's one of the reasons that the city is regulating these things uh -huh. now, because you can have an, uh, an electric vehicle and, right. and you may assume, hey, it's just a golf cart, it's not gonna go slow, I'm gonna mm -hmm. let my little kid drive it. Mm -hmm. And that's a damn electric vehicle, it's gonna go 50 miles an hour. Right. And it has seat belts, but. Right. Once I mean, they're motorized, some of them are gas powered. Get, while some are gas, are, some are electric. Some yeah. of the electric, though, are, are more powerful than the gas. Really? So, I just I saw mean, the gas were more. And, and they can have a bigger motor in, 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 in a gas powered. Man. So that's why, and that's why we always got to regulate it. Everybody's got to know what they're getting into, make sure they're insured. Okay. That way we don't have these fly by night people doing just that, sure. renting to a young family who comes down here on vacation. Mm -hmm. They let their little kids ride while the parents are trying to enjoy the beach, and then there's a wreck happen. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, and those are the issues, and that's why we have to have these regulations. Of course. So, folks, you just want to be careful out there. Do the same rules apply, you know, as far as if there is an accident, they need to take pictures, get checked out, all that stuff? Same things yeah. you always hear us preach. Okay, okay. 
which is take pictures of the scene, go get medically treated, and do not talk to the insurance. Go see a lawyer. You you, Aren't you, you proud it. of me? There you go. I've learned Catching something. On. I've learned something. <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you both for chatting about this. I hope this helped you guys with golf carts. I mean, again, it's so popular right now. So if you have one, make sure you put some insurance on that separately. And uh, we will chat with you soon. Thanks for watching today, the Carolina Justice Report. We have new episodes that drop every Tuesday at 2 p.m. And, of course, you can see us on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Find us anywhere that you consume your media. Thanks so much for watching today. We'll see you next time. When life gets up.